Well, hello there, fishing freaks. This is my last opportunity today to go catch some largemouth before I head up to Canada. I just gotta get me a few more largemouth sniffs in. And then we're gonna head back to see OSG and Winston. I tried to get her to come out here today. She is studying hardcore for her um, dietetics exam. She's dedicated to that craft. I, I don't even know what that's about, you know? Studying on a weekend over going fishing. You're not gonna catch me doing that. Certainly didn't do that in college. It's probably why I made mediocre grades though. She's a Sigma Cum Lada or whatever you call it. Also gotta say thanks to all the fishing freaks that left all the all the great comments on the uh, the latest intros on my videos. Got I got the perfect character that I'll be introducing here in the next few months. You guys definitely gave me some some good inspiration. Today is also a full moon day. I was just looking at the full moon a while ago. And that is always a, a little tricky fishing day in my experience. But I wanna know from you guys, what do you think about fishing during a full moon? Um, not during the spawn. Because in my experience traveling around, it seems like the full moon, fishing on the day of a full moon definitely has a, a negative effect. I always seem to have bad luck on days of the full moon when I'm fishing. All right, we're gonna be starting out with a little swim bait action. Swim bait in the shallows. Just had a little rain, so there is a little bit of water on some shallow brush here. This is the time of year when the, the bluegill are also uh, spawning or have spawned. So there's some bluegill fry up in the shallows. I'm fishing this swim bait on the 7-4 heavy six stick combo. And I've got uh, 16 pound fluorocarbon on here. Throwing these little swim baits like this is a good little technique. Uh, early morning time in the summer. Uh, you can fish them around docks and marinas as well. Skip them up under the shade in the midday hours. We definitely don't have shade today. This is a bluebird, a bluebird day after a full moon. What I was saying about the full moon, I think that the fish feed at night during a full moon. This has kind of been my experience. Like if you're fishing at night during a full moon, it's good, but if you're fishing during the day, I think they've already had a little feeding sesh. Oh, dang. I had a fish on. He swam me right into that thing. He was literally swimming sideways with it. I tried. Didn't work out shallow. It's time to go to the deepness. Well, really not deepness. Mid-depth, going to the worms. Gonna slow down a little bit. Maybe throw a crankbait. The shallow game is not working out. The full moon has uh, sabotaged my fishing day. To trying trying to get my last sniffs in for it's all small mouth they don't smell the same i gotta get me the green smell one last time a lot of you have asked in the comments about uh, fishing deep and and reading a graph and i've done some videos on it i've done some older videos um some on lake fork just to kind of briefly explain what I'm doing now is I'm looking for brush piles. This is a really good summertime technique. Brush piles, they kind of look like a stack of fish. They can be deceiving, um, but usually it's just a pile of brush that someone has put out, either willow trees or people take old Christmas trees and put them out in, in deeper water. And usually they plant them on, on depth changes like ledges and drop-offs. And I usually start to look out in that um, you know, the second break line, like 10 to 15, 15 to 20, whatever it is on your lake. And I just start looking for them. And so I'm looking at this same couple of piles I found um, from about a month ago, and I'm gonna see if the fish have actually uh, moved up on it real good now. Now always an essential tool for doing this is a marker buoy. Deep fishing is really boring too, by the way. Just a lot of like idling and looking at electronics. It's not as exciting as shallow, you know, top water and all that. Um, it's just good for big fish is all. Definitely looks like there's uh, like a school of crappie on there or something. Uh, could be a few bass down there too. I'm gonna stop and fish it. I just threw my buoy out. On pressured lakes, or on lakes where I know the fish get kind of finicky, especially a day like today, 
sometimes what I'll do is I'll just I'll just throw the buoy out and I'll just I'll leave the area for a little bit like right now I'm just rigging up and that way the fish aren't spooked by me just throwing out the buoy you know they see that weight coming down there and then the trolling motor and everything sitting on top of them they hear the electronics noise I'm gonna rig up a Texas rig worm I'm gonna go with a half ounce weight my favorite weight for fishing mid-depth to you know out to 20 feet is usually 3 8 ounce but it's uh it's getting pretty windy out here it's like 15 mile an hour winds this is the time when the big worms do damage so i'm going to put the 10 inch worm on there that's 16 pound fluorocarbon and i've got that on the seven foot heavy big sexy so that's going to give me enough backbone to get the hook into the fish This is probably my favorite way to fish on weekends like this, especially if you're going to fish a tournament or something like that. Just because a lot of the a lot of the weekend traffic, the weekend uh, anglers will usually stay up shallow. So if you put your time in and you find some good brush piles, some good rock piles, or road beds, or whatever it is, it can pay off if you're fishing on a really high traffic day. Apologize for the wind noise. It's just one of them days. Oh, there's a bite. Oh, dead gum. Another fish. I think he's got it. Got him. Small one. Small bass. Woo! That is not the kind of bass you expect to catch on a 10 inch worm. Man, you took the brunt of that manly hook set I just laid down on you, sir. I, I am sorry. I thought you were much bigger. I'll still give you a sniff. Oh, smells so sweet, guys. Smells so sweet. Yeah, that's definitely not what I was expecting. You know, that bass was only a couple inches longer than this worm. Now, here's another thing that I like to do. If I'm trying to look for brush piles, I'll usually keep a, a big crankbait handy, make a few search casts, and maybe hit it. I just hooked one on that crankbait. I don't think it's very big, though. I don't know. It's coming up to jump. No, nope, not very big. A little search bait. Just snagged me one there. I don't know. Maybe those weren't crappie I saw on the graph. Maybe they're just small bass. Nice fat one there. I'd say the top baits for catching big bass on the on the deeper side of things is going to be a big worm like this, a deep diving crankbait, uh, a flutter spoon, and then, oh, I just had another bite. And then a jig, like dragging a football jig. Oh, what the heck? Whoa, time out here. Holy crap. My rod just came apart. This is one of my old uh, composite cranking rods old champion old champion died a couple fish off that hole then it just shut down a lot of times that happens with brush piles you make a you know make a few casts into the brush pile you get a few fish out and then they stop biting i tried switching it up you know throwing the crankbait and and the worm back in there but the key thing that keeps happening today is they bite it and then they just drop it. They let go. That's happened to me multiple, multiple times a day. And I think it's because of that darn full moon. Just dropped me another buoy. Went down the way about 100 yards, found another little point that uh, looks like it has a couple fish on it. Not a whole lot. Another very small bathtub size little portion of fish. So let's see if I can pluck one out of here. Let me try with the cronk first. Just to a movement attack they're biting funny like this you either gotta get a reaction strike or you just gotta i don't know if i if i knew i'd be fishing the tear this spot's about the same depth 12 to 14 there's a drop and they're sitting on the edge of that drop there that gum trolling motor keeps Jeez. come on big red stay together for me oh oh my gosh ah I about fell out of the boat. I went all the way to the back deck on that hook set for a doobler. Lost a sandal. 
classic LFG move. I'll sniff you because you almost killed me. I was hoping that was the one. I turned on my, uh, my GoPro on the first little nibble and then it was like nibble, 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 nibble. And by the time the GoPro engaged, I was on the back deck about to fall in because there was no resistance on, on that fish, obviously. Yo, that's a pile of wood. Yeah, here we go. Right after I got hung, I cast it back in there and got a good bite. Oh, yes. There's the one. There's the one we needed for our sniff. Yes. That's a quality bass. Get up in here, baby. Mm. Yes, sir. Look at that chunk. That the exact same thing happened. I cast in the exact same spot and it felt the exact same squishy heavy instead of a stick turned out to be a nice four pounder i believe that's going to make our instagram photo of the day where we get our last sniff in before we uh head up to canada nice chunk we've enjoyed our one last largemouth bass sniff before we gotta head to the canadian brown fish that's a beautiful fish, I gotta say. Good one to end on, to head up to Canada. I think it's time to go check in with OSG. She, uh, she let me know that you guys have uh, kind of overflowed our PO box. So the post office called and uh, we gotta go do a little box maintenance. <gasps> wow, I love you. See ya. Slowly swims into the depths. I'm gonna try one last little worm gerbler on this spot here. I'm gonna go with the hyper worm, a little bit more compact. Kind of cut this at an angle. A little tackle modification there. That'll actually turn that into more of a like a ribbon tail. I'm gonna throw that on that same spot where I've got three bites. There's there's just something in there that's I'm getting hung on. Oh my gosh. Has that fish got it? Oh, took my worm. Completely took it. Completely dabbled me. There's so much garlic in here, maybe he's thinking, oh, I want another one. That was delicious. Can I have another breadstick, sir? It's like those little red lobster biscuits. Can't eat just one. Oh, there he is again. Got him. He wanted that other biscuit. Oh, it's a little one though. Fighter though. Strong as an ox. Look how fat. Woo! Actually got him on the outside of the mouth. All right, I know I said that last fish was gonna be my last fish, but I couldn't resist making another cast in there just to see. He wanted the Cheddar Bay Biscuit. When you got kayaks, canoes, aluminum boats, big water skiing boats, and pontoons out all at the same time in a cluster, that's how you know it's Saturday. Woo, mercy. Well, that wasn't the longest I've ever waited at a boat ramp line, but uh, I'd, cer I'd certainly put it up there. You know, if I was gonna start, business when are you fishing freaks should do this you go on weekends and you service boat ramps with like a with like a service cart with like popsicles and ice cream for kids and then frosty adult beverages why people are waiting in line at boat ramps I think that's a brilliant idea because everybody's hot everybody's wanting refreshments Dang, should do that me and OSG come out here in a little, little golf cart just put a, like a refrigerator thing on the back of it. Is that a good idea? Bad idea? Let me know in the comments. When you come home to a dog that loves you, it just brightens up your day. I love dogs and I love Winston. Let's go say hi to him. Hello. Come on in. Oh! Look at the movement. Look at the movement. All right, maybe he's not as excited as I thought he was going to be. I just got home. You just got home. Oh, you ruined it then. Uh, 
What do we got going on at the Healthy Chew today? Now we just have a pomegranate. We just have a pomegranate. Oh no. This is your lunch, sorry. This is one of my favorite things about coming home on uh, from fishing trips like early in the day. Because if Stephanie is doing her posts for the Healthy Chew, that means I get to eat the leftovers. Mm, spicy taste to it. What is kombucha? Explain to everybody. She just got a, a, us out a couple of kombuchas. Kombucha is like a fermented tea, so it has probiotics in it. Good with antioxidants, probiotics. Perfect with bacon. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're throwing some bacon in there. You're just doing that for me. You like feeling good with the, your synergies and then bacon. And then load on the bacon. It actually gives you a little buzz. I was gonna say, there is some alcohol like, in there. If you drink it on an empty stomach, it actually gives you a little bit of buzz because it's, uh, it's fermented, so it's like kind of alcohol-ish. While she's making her tasty creations, I wanted to tell you guys, if you like some of the tips today, um, I was actually filming more stuff for Mystery Taco Box out there today, which I do a lot. So if you want to see more tips and tricks and things like that, you can go subscribe to their channel as well, and you can see like more intricate tips on, on stuff like that. Kind of like what I was doing today, just, um, I do stuff like that over there all the time. So if you're a fishing freak and you want more tips, you can go check some out over there. Boxes and things. One's already opened. Yeah. Should get in there? So the, the post office basically told us that we we had an overflow. We needed well, to come get our yeah. Winston, you need to be on mail patrol for me. You need to let me know. Things get crowded in there. The fishing freaks send everything in. Give me an alert. Give me a bark. Give me a Give me a fart. Give me a high five. Shake. Oh yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Huh. What? What is this? Where's that? This is like an invitation. Okay. Any any like significant note or anything in there? It doesn't even say where it is, except for the fact that on the actual package it says Grand Prairie. So I figure it's up in Grand Prairie. Okay. So we don't know who's inviting us. No. Basically. <laughs> okay. It just says show up. You're invited. All right, well, whoever sent that, thank you very much. Uh, that's a very cool invitation. Hopefully they're not like plotting to this kidnap us or something. Or so. Logan Miller here, I just peeked in, just peeked into this box. It looks very interesting. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, we were just talking about Winston. Look what we got for you, uh, Winston. Logan hooked you up, dude. Look at that, dude. You got, you got a little toy. That's or so you got cute. a little friend. Look at that. You could be like your little friend. That's so cute. He's confused. He's like, is this, a, is this a little me? What am I doing? Oh, that is so cute. So cute. Are you going to attack it or are you going to cuddle with it? <laughs> oh, look at it. He's trying to play with it. He thinks it's like real. He's like trying to paw it. He's sm oh, that's so cute. Trying to paw it. And he thinks it's a little puppy. And he's smelling it. He's smelling its butt. He's like, what's going on? Oh, he's grabbing it. He's grabbing it. Oh, now he's gonna kill it. He's killing it now. He's killing it. Killer instinct kicked in. Kill the young. Like a lion. Thank you, obviously. He loves it. Logan got a nice letter in here. He's got a little LFG with a bass jumping out of the water. That's awesome. He's got a bunch of stuff in here. He's got he's got lures. This is, this is like a smorgasbord of stuff. I, I've never gotten a box that has this much stuff. He's got a tackle box in here. He's got another tennis ball for Winston. Winnie Pooh, there you go. He's really having fun with his little Frenchie look-alike, though. He's he like loves that. Uh, this looks like some cologne here. Maybe for OSG on uh, those days I get off the water. He drew Winston. Look at that. Are they combined? Oh my gosh, look what he... Remembered the Animorphs. Do you remember talking about that? The Animorphs? Animorphia? Look at this. Oh, it's like a coloring book. Yes, it's a coloring book, but do you remember talking about the Animorphs on this channel? I guess he did oh, that. That's really cool. That's pretty impressive. Remember talking about the Animorphs with the bass? Oh, and I was like, that was like forever was like, ago. No, he must be a hardcore fishing freak. Thank you for the treasure box, my friend. That's awesome. Another little package here from Alec. He sent in some pictures. There we go, LFG Fishing TV. He sent in some, some lures and um, he said that he has become a better better angler because of the channel. And he asked that I continue creating high quality content. Don't worry about that. It's just gonna get better and better. Right, OSG? Oh yeah. And John also sent in 
some jigs. Awesome. I can never have enough jigs. Thank you, John. I was just looking at those. Those look quality. And I'm probably going to take some of the, uh, the little football heads up to Canada with me. Thank you very much for the yigs. And thank you to everyone else that sent in your letters. I will definitely read those. And I uh, appreciate you just jamming up the, the P.O. box. That's awesome. If you want to send in any more stuff, P.O. box down in the description for you guys. It's going to be hard to top old Logan here with the, uh, the smorgasbord of stuff here for, for all three of us. OSG, Winston, and me. He just... Put a lot of thought into that, so appreciate it. That looks really delicious here, babe. What do we got going on? It's kind of like a Greek smorgasbord of a salad. Got everything in it. Good nutrition. Mmm. Got bacon, avocado. That's all I need to know. <laughs> bacon and avocado. Yum. And it's got some green stuff in there. We don't need to know everything. I think it's got garbanzo beans. Not even sure what those are, but they sound great. We're gonna sit down and enjoy this nice garbanzo avocado salad or whatever organzo bacon salad is what i'm calling it and this will be the last video before radio silence commences so the next time i see you guys i will be probably dressed in cold weather gear up in the canadian wilderness don't forget to turn on the notifications when i get back and i will release the great wilderness footage upon you and the first one to comment uh receives a shout out so turn on the notifications and uh, all you gotta do is leave a comment, um, say whatever you want. Uh, just don't say anything crazy and stupid. Just say something, you know, thoughtful, and uh, you'll get a shout out on the channel. OSG is gonna be uh, monitoring the um, the comments. They want you to take over your. Uh... They want you to take over the channel. Oh my gosh, is that a good idea? Let us know in the comments. That would be a terrible. That, idea. You guys want to see like really uh, like bland talks about food <laughs> and like scientific. Um, experiments with like her and uh, like a white lab coat with like beakers and stuff like that. That's probably what you're gonna see uh, if she takes over my channel. She's a total nerd and food geek. Now I'm not gonna fungo anything on this table that you guys sent in because that would be disrespectful, but I do have an old crusty lime that I'm gonna fungo it out with and we'll see you guys later. Oh, I'm sorry, Winston. Rebounded, my bad, bro. It's giving me the mean mug.